yeah, so most monsters are viable in some sense, uh, especially if they have a really good subbreed, even if the monster itself is not particularly good. Uh, ape is one of those monsters. I don't have um, the ape plant mix here because I thought it might obfuscate my point a little bit, but uh, ape plant is probably the best ape if you're going to enter one in a tournament. It has the highest guts rate, and that alone is usually enough to decide uh, which monster you want to enter if you're trying to try hard it. Ape, yeah, Ape does not have a good guts rate. It has one of the worst guts rates in the game. And so because of that, every little bit helps for the majority of tournaments. So you're going to want to go with the Ape plant. And, uh... Unless, I, I mean, unless you like this guy's hair lip, like, you can go with him. I guess he's cute. He's got... I, I just realized his teeth are, like, off-white. They're, like, yellow. Almost the same yellow as his skin. That's kind of gross. But yeah, so first thing I'm going to go over is uh, stat caps. Most tournaments will have a stat cap of some sort, and if they don't, um, you end up in a situation where every single monster has 999 for every stat. So what I've done here, I've built uh, an example of a monster that has some stats maxed out, and then a couple of dump stats. If you're not running intelligence attacks, you don't need to run any intelligence. And when you have a stat cap and every point matters, um, you want to have intelligence as low as possible. Like, you want to have intelligence as one. And you want your power to be at 950. Um, the level of your attack, or sorry, the level of your skill, or speed, or life, or power, or whatever it happens to be, is the thing that indicates how much damage it does. Level 19 and level 20 have a difference, but any stats within level 20 are all identical. So 950 power is the exact same as 999. So ideally, if you're trying to min-max, uh, what you will want to do is stop your power exactly at 950. Maybe lower, depending on the total stat cap. You might not want to invest that much in power. But uh, just as an example for this one, um, I stopped at exactly 950. So I had as many points left over as possible to invest into other things. Um, Skill is the most important stat in the game. Very, very few like serious competitive builds will run a monster that does not have 950 skill. Um, consistency is what wins games because it's all AI. It's essentially salty bets. There's not a lot you can predict, but what you can have a hand in as a trainer is making your moves more consistent. Um, if you're not able to physically choose your monster's moves, the best you can do is that, like, hope they hit. And the best way to hope they hit is to make sure that your monster has as much accuracy as possible. Um, Ape specifically has really, really garbage accuracy on all of his attacks, and it's kind of offset by his low guts rate. But uh, on Ape especially, I don't think not maxing out skill is ever a good idea. Um, speed is set to 760. 760 is a defensive stat number you will see very, very often. Um, the way that form works in this game, if you take a look at my ape, my form is slim because I just rested it on accident. But uh, you want to get to skinny. And if you have maximum skinniness, like as skinny as your monster can possibly be, um, then what happens is... Uh, you get a boost to your speed at the cost of a negative multiplier to your defense. So this is true no matter what your form is. If you have like plus one form, um, you'll get a multiplier. If you have plus 100 form, you get a multiplier. Every single point adds 0.25% uh, bonus or penalty to one of the stats. So the skinnier you get, um, the more of a bonus it is to speed and the more of a detriment it is to defense and the plumper you get on the other side It's the opposite. So at 760 speed you hit an effective speed of 950 so if you've ever um, Run into a monster and you're like why why do my attacks seem to have like really low accuracy? Despite this monster not really having the highest speed um, This is exactly why it's completely based on form um, oh no, you know what? What, uh, what lowers form? Cup Jelly lowers form, right? Yeah. Yeah, by three. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna feed him a couple more, but I think you get the idea. Oh, I got a diamond mark. <laughs> Let's go. I can almost get a duck in. At 760, um, at minus 100 form, 
with each point equaling 0.25% bonus, you end up with a 25% total bonus, which is a massive bonus. And that means that speed at this point has effectively 950. It's essentially level 20 skill at this point, so it's maxed out. And as we know, you don't want to put extra points into it um, because once you hit level 50, like 950 on the dot, every point after that no longer has any bearing. Um, so with 760, instead of 950 uh, on the speed, you essentially save 190 points that you can add to another stat somewhere else. So in this case, I this is a very generic example of where power and skill are maxed out. Speed is maxed out in a way that saves me 190 points to dump into another stat. And then intelligence and defense are my dump stats. Um, the reason you want to save every point possible is that life is the only stat that does not matter what level you're at. Every single point in life matters on the battlefield. If you have 940 life or you have 942 life or 999 life, that's the number that shows up. So every point you can save is a point you can dump into life. And ideally, um, you want to crank as many of the extra points into life as possible. So yeah, so that's why um, stats are built the way they are for the most part. The reason I have one defense is for the same thing. You usually, um, you focus on one offensive stat, skill, and one defensive stat. Defensive stat being speed and defense. Life is obviously a defensive stat, but uh, life is integral and you kind of want to pump as many points into it as you can, um, case permitting. Um, so there's lots of tournaments where I might have, I don't know, an additional like 100 points left over or whatever. And at that point, I would throw them into defense. I wouldn't worry about intelligence. There's no point putting them in intelligence because I don't have any intelligence attacks. But um, the one defense is just an example of normally you focus on one um, defensive stat and not the other. The way defense works in this game is that um, while the formula is really complicated, um, the higher your power is and the higher your defense is, the less damage you take from power attacks. But it has very little bearing on intelligence attacks and vice versa. The higher your intelligence is and defense, they like kind of work in tandem to uh, lower incoming attacks. So think of it as like a, a brain versus brawn type uh, scenario where um, the big muscle bound guy has a weakness to like psychic attacks. And the same sort of rationale here with the way they built it. Um, in reality, what ends up happening is it makes defense the worst stat because it's essentially 50% as effective as uh, it should be. You want to focus on speed over defense on any monster that has a low guts rate. Because the issue with having a low guts rate and low speed is that when you get hit, almost all attacks in the game lower your guts. Sometimes it's a little bit, sometimes it's a lot. It becomes a detriment to get hit every single time. And so you end up in a situation where you've got a monster who's not taking any damage because he's tanky as all hell, but he never gets a chance to attack. And I've had situations like that. I, I want to try it out just for the hell of it. I raised a, a purebred arrowhead who actually has a buffed guts rate in this game in hard mode um, of 15, which is still incredibly low, below average. But the problem was that I, there was entire matches where he'd get hit once and it would be enough to lower his guts to the point where he could never get back in range. Like, he just lost immediately. And um, the way that monsters attack when they're controlled by the AI in this game is that they need to have a minimum of 45 guts or else they won't attack. The only off, or off chance that they will attack is if they see that their opponent has foolery. Then they'll attack at whatever point, maybe. But if like during normal play conditions if they have less than 45 guts they will not attack like they're programmed not to attack it's not a maybe situation it's like an absolute so if it takes a really long time to build guts and you have to get to almost 50 guts every single time before you can use even your basic techs you don't want to be getting it you don't want to be losing guts so when uh when you're building an ape or you're building anything, nearly anything except for the top three or four fastest guess rate monsters, healing moves are also below 45 guess, that's correct, but uh, <laughs> we'll get into why you may not want to use healing moves. So that's essentially how stats work, that's why you would want your stats the way they are. Um, raising your stats in order is extremely important for min-maxing. 
when you get to a situation where you're trying to build a monster that has min max stats and you're not wasting any points anywhere here or there you're going to have to use drills that lower stats there's these four heavy drills and all of them lower one stat pull lowers speed leap lowers power Swim lowers intelligence, and Meditate lowers defense. So these two are, like, you can think of them as inverses of each other. This one lowers defense and raises intelligence, and then this one does the opposite. And then this one raises speed and lowers power, and this one does the opposite. Or, for example, in this one, we're going to try and lower intelligence and defense. But if you can see here, intel the only way to lower defense is by raising your intelligence, and the only way to lower your intelligence is by raising your defense. So you get into this awkward catch-22, where you can't really do the things you want to do. So the way to get around this is very awkward, and this is probably the only difficult part of raising an ape specifically, uh, but you run into this situation every time you want to raise a monster with high power and high speed, but minimum defense and intelligence. You need to use swim to lower your intelligence as much as possible, and then after you have lowered intelligence as much as you can, like to one, for example, then you need to start using Paradoxin. And Paradoxin is a drug that increases your power and skill by uh, 30 each week for one month on every successful cheated or great drill. It, it works on an errantry too, but that's really risky and I wouldn't suggest doing it because the chance of you using Paradoxin on a baby monster and it completing all four weeks of errantry is extremely low. But on top of those, the 30 gain in power and skill, it comes with the negative effect of a minus 20%, I believe it's 20%, uh, penalty to uh, both your defensive stats, both speed and um, defense. So the reason that we can re raise defense at the beginning and not worry too much about it is that uh, Paradoxin affects it so negatively that a little bit of a bump in defense early on is easily negated by um, Paradoxin use. So once your intelligence is at one, 10% per week, okay. Um, yeah, but it's for every week. So it actually even has a stronger effect the higher your defense is. So you get to a point where it honestly doesn't matter how many defense drills you do, like how many swim drills you do, uh, it's gonna be lowered essentially the same amount or the same amount of weeks. So that's why you pump points into swim early on and you don't worry about meditate right away because lowering your defense by three or four at the absolute maximum doesn't matter at all when you can lower it by 10 or even 20 or even 30, depending on how high you got your defense. If you got your defense up to 300, you may be screwing up a little bit, and uh, you may be uh, in a situation where you're not able to actually bring it all the way down to one. I just realized the the stream is... My audio desyncs on EPSXE sometimes, so if it gets all garbled, just let me know. Long story short, use defense drills for swim specifically to get meditate all the way, or fuck, to get intelligence all the way down to uh, one, and then use Paradoxin to get um, your defense all the way down to one as well. Right now, this monster has uh, a lot of battle specials. These are the ones that I consider to be the best in the game. Uh, there are a lot more, you're allowed to use whatever you want, but uh, you can use power or, or anger depending on your monster's nature. Um, the more bad-natured your monster is, the higher chance of it triggering anger. And the more good-natured your monster is, the more of a chance of it triggering power. If your monster is neutral-natured, they won't trigger either. But uh, all monsters do possess both of these traits innately. And it just matters on their, uh, their nature, on which one will trigger in battle. Uh, power is an incredibly good person, like PvP skill. Being able to do double damage and get uh, a come from behind victory is like, it cannot be understated how good it is uh, when you're playing as a human player against another human player or against the AI. But the thing about AI battles is that the AI in this game is incredibly dumb. Uh, sometimes it just won't attack for no reason. Loyalty also affects special chance, but you should have 100 always. Yeah, exactly. 
So power is really really good in uh, PvP, but because of the AI being so dumb, uh, it's you're you're really hoping for something special. You're hoping for a miracle for the monster to decide to um, use an attack during the five or ten seconds max that uh, is available. And a lot of the times uh, when power triggers, it triggers because, well, I mean, every single time that power triggers, it triggers because you were hit by an attack. And a lot of attacks drain your guts. So you get to a point where the attack triggers, or sorry, uh, the skill triggers, you get power, and uh, you're not actually able to attack because your monster doesn't have 45 guts. Uh, as a player, like a human player, that none of that shit matters. You can just attack whenever you feel like it. But uh, there's plenty of examples in tournament where a monster triggers power and then um, it runs out completely before the monster even has 45 guts. And so because of that, it's extremely risky. Uh, I've run it to pretty good success in a, a niche tournament called uh, Spartan Babies, where my monster had a really fast guts rate, so the chance of it being below 45 guts for the entire period was really low. And uh, I also had really, really high skill, so I didn't have to worry about missing too much. And that combined with fast, cheap text like really worked out um, the the miracle combo for having power work in your advantage is an extremely fast guts rate and uh, good accurate cheap attacks those are like the the things that you want if you're going to build for power specifically you need a lot of cheap attacks in a lot of ranges um, that are accurate but anger uh, has the ability to or sorry, it increases your guts rate by 50%, which is always good. You always want more meter. You always want more of your resource that you need to use to attack. Um, and it also doubles the amount of withering you do on all your attacks. So the reason that this is usually run over power is that it's just innate. Um, you just gain extra guts, which is always good when you have a stupid AI that won't attack below uh, 45 and then um, you also have a situation where it's also a very good comeback mechanic because being able to lower your monster, your opponent's guts by double what you normally would on a successful hit is huge. It's almost always game changing. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm getting to that. The, the only reason that you would maybe consider power over anger and especially on specific builds um, and I did this uh, on a Naga build I built for... Uh, um, the, the scary guys tournament. I went with the power route because I built like a huge glass cannon I fucked up on my calculation and I ended up with something like 350 life after everything was said and done and Because of that uh, I was really worried about the one drawback of anger Which is that in it increases your chance to get hit. I think it's 50% boost uh, It may not be actually that high, but it, it's pretty substantial. It's massive and uh, so you get into a situation where you've got all these good things happening for you. You get extra guts regeneration. You get extra withering on your moves. Even if your monster doesn't do a lot of withering, it's great to be able to do double the amount. Like withering is super overlooked by a lot of uh, new players. It, it often wins matches on its own. Um, but the thing is that, yeah, like I built this glass cannon and I was afraid if I got anger, uh, the worst thing that would happen is you get hit once, anger triggers, and then you get hit a second time and you die. Um, it's bad enough, like, it's bad enough to get hit the one time when you have max speed, but then as soon as you lose that advantage of having max speed because of anger, um, it, it can put you in a really scary situation. Uh, grit, grit is essential on all monsters if you want to raise one for a tournament. It doesn't trigger super often. Uh, I'm not sure what triggers it outside of loyalty. Loyalty triggers all um, specials more often, like Al said. But uh, Grit brings your monster back from the dead. You get hit, you die, you come back with 1 HP. It's not um, always going to happen, it's not always going to win you games, but just having the chance that, okay, I didn't actually get knocked out is huge. It makes a big difference. Um, Fury is mostly a meme. Uh, it's around 23 to 25 percent. Yeah, that's so that's really big. Um, yeah, Fury is mostly a meme. It's actually 
arguably the strongest special in the game by a wide margin, uh, if used by a player. Fury only procs uh, when you get hit by an opponent who also has a battle special already triggered, so say they have power or anger or uh, ease or whatever. Um, and what it does is it doubles your power and it doubles the amount of withering you do. The downsides for it are that it lasts for a very short amount of time, and most of the time when you get hit, um, you've lost guts. So you lot run into a situation a lot of the times where um, you get hit by someone who's in anger, anger being the most common uh, competitive battle special, and then when it procs fury, you're in a situation where you can't use an attack. So it's the same situation as power, uh, where it's very, very good when a player uses it, but Fury especially is kind of bad because of its trigger condition, which um, almost always means that it's going to trigger in a situation where it's probably not a good time to actually trigger. Uh, ease uh, is a really good ability to have. It's definitely a win more ability, where uh, when you're already winning, Ease is a good way to increase your lead. Um, ease triggers when you hit three attacks in a row or your opponent misses by three attacks in a row and it decreases the amount of uh, guts that you need to use to use an attack like it, it decreases your guts cost and it increases it essentially increases your evasion it increases your speed stat um, so you can go beyond maximum speed essentially uh, I don't know what parameter it actually changes, I don't know if it lowers the opponent's skill or something like that, but basically what it does is it makes you harder to hit, and it lowers the cost of your moves. So it's only got positives, um, like I said, it is kind of hard to trigger, and it only triggers when you're already winning, but building elite is never bad. Ease is actually supposed to double the damage you take when you get hit, um, but that's not coded into the game correctly, so that is never actually a thing that happens. Um, and then hurry doubles your critical hit rate in the last 10 seconds of the game if you're losing. Um, just kind of a Hail Mary. Uh, I like having it just in case. It barely triggers, but it's not... Uh, like, there's no downside to it. You get to double your critical hit rate, that's pretty good. Uh, next we'll talk about the techniques that your monster will want. So. In a competitive environment, uh, what you're usually trying to do is limit the amount of attacks you have in each slot to one or two. Uh, I think it's some amount of increasing effect your guts correction. Yeah, so that's, that makes sense to me. That may not make sense to everybody uh, watching, but all you need to know is that it makes uh, your monster harder to hit. Um, yeah, so Tex. Um, because you have to rely on your AI monster doing all the stuff for you, the one thing you don't want to do is load it up with garbage Tex because it'll find a way to use them. And anybody who's raised a Pixie for tournament knows that they love to use Pat and Kick. Um, and almost all tournaments do not allow you to remove uh, basic techs. It's becoming more and more common because there's a lot of builds that aren't viable specifically because of a monster's basic techs. Like, for example, Plant is really bad if you're not able to remove the basic techs. It's already kind of bad because it, um, it's a monster that definitely requires uh, a human player. It's a monster that requires strategy to use correctly and just letting the AI blow its load on attacks that like it doesn't need to use at a specific time um, is a really good way to lose with plant but plant is especially bad because it has two of the worst um, starting basic techs in the game kick that it's on the mind yeah <laughs> um, pixie rapper the rapper but ape is very easy to build an optimal power build for you ready for this Bam. You got four moves, you got slap, you got thwack, you got grab throw, and you got roll assault. Ape actually doesn't have many power attacks despite what he looks like. He's almost entirely intelligence based, um, which is really funny considering his, uh, his minimum uh, worst intelligence gain in the game. He shares it with a couple of monsters, but it's the worst he can possibly have. Um, the only move we're missing is Swing Throw. And Swing Throw is just Grab Throw, um, but the animation is longer and it's way riskier. And Gape 
Ape doesn't <laughs> gape. Uh, Ape doesn't have the guts rate to be screwing around with a move that costs as much as Swing Throw does. So, as you'll see here, um, Ape has two attacks that have decent hit rate. He's got Thwack with a B and Slap with A. And even though this says Force D, Slap's actually a very strong move. Um, Thwack is one of the best moves in the game uh, as far as basic techs go. And then these two are the powerhouses. You've got Roll Assault, which is an instant KO a lot of the time for only 27 guts, does a lot of damage. And then Grab Throw uh, does a ton of damage, absolute monster truck move um, for only 17 guts. So this is how you optimally build a, a power ape. Um, intelligence apes are a lot more complicated and there's a lot more going on with it. As you can see in uh, the bottom of the screen, I've got this little move viewer made by Lexi. Um, these moves are inaccurate to HM, but we can go over them anyway. Um, you want Sneeze, you want Blast, maybe Boomerang to fill a slot, and then you're probably going to want to go with Bomb and Big Bomb. Uh, Big Banana is incredible. Like, there's so much to say about Big Banana. The move takes so long to happen. It does no damage. Um, like, it does damage, but it does very little damage. Um, it's accurate, but it's not accurate enough to warrant its use. And uh, it doesn't do almost any withering. So, you get in this situation where you have this move that has a ton of downsides and almost nothing going for it. Whereas, you have Bomb and Big Bomb, which are... Um, your damage dealing, this is like your powerhouse move. Uh, what was Alkias talking about in his last comment? Uh, we were just talking about how Ease has, is a battle special that um, it makes it harder for your opponent to hit you. So if, once Ease triggers, it's essentially as if uh, your speed went up. The thing he's talking about is a much more complicated, um, uh, it's a much more complicated lesson type thing that uh, I can get into a little bit at the end of this. But Guts Correction is basically, um, it's a thing that determines how accurate some of your moves are outside of your skill and outside of the move's actual um, accuracy rating. So we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, you want Bomb and Big Bomb. Uh, realistically, probably just Big Bomb, um, but you're not going to be able to get it without getting Bomb uh, unless you're allowed to cheat out the moves. So the reason, even though Sneeze isn't particularly good, Blast is okay, but um, the reason you want to get Sneeze and Blast is because you always want to have a move if you're raising an intelligence monster, um, or a power monster for that matter. Um, if they have attacks that are of the designation that you're not using, so for example, um, you've got Thwack, you've got Thwack and Slap up here, both power attacks, both power type, you can see that in the top corner, um, you don't want to be using those. So you're going to want to try and hide them under other moves. And so the moves you hide those under are Blast and Sneeze. Even though they're not fantastic moves, um, having an intelligence move there is necessary to have over top just so you lower the chance of your opponent, of your monster using it, sorry. Um, when you are submitting a monster for a tournament, the... When you send the save file over, when you s freeze the monster, and the moves that are s currently selected are the moves that show up first. So for example, you had um, Slap and Sneeze and Blast and Thwack. Uh, before you were to submit your memory card file, um, the last thing you would want to do, or maybe not the last thing you'd want to do, but you'd want to do it near the end, is make sure that you go into a battle um, make sure that blast and sneeze are the active moves like you hit square to swap it or circle it's i forget it's, it's square you hit square to swap it and then um, you send in your memory card like that because it saves that data it saves what the last moves that were active were um, same thing where if you had um bomb and big bomb say you wanted to use big bomb on frame one because it's in the furthest distance there's a really good chance that you'll use an attack right away uh, you'd want to make sure that Big Bomb is active over Bomb, even though that your monster is going to spaz out and change stat, um, going to change stuff over the course of the battle. You at least have control over what it starts with. 
And starting with something and having control over it that way is another factor towards lowering the amount of RNG that happens in a game. And because there is so much RNG that happens in the game, you have so little control over what your monster actually does. Um, the more that you can do to mitigate bad decisions on the part of your garbage child is beneficial. Now, how to get energy. Okay, so Boomerang and Big Banana are both hit techs. Um, it is possible to get either of them first. Um, the thing that's interesting about uh, the way that getting techniques works in this game is that they all have a priority. There's all one that is easier to unlock than the other. If you can see at the bottom, it says hit tech, intelligence and skill should total over 350 to unlock for Boomerang. And then for Big Banana, intelligence and skill should total over 600 to unlock. Um, so you would think that Boomerang is the one that's intended to get first, and Big Banana is the one that's intended to get second. And that's true, that's how the game is kind of programmed. Um, but what's interesting about this game is that you don't actually need to have over 350 to unlock Boomerang. Um, the amount of loyalty you have actually affects this number. It drags it down a little bit. We don't know the exact number, like the exact ratio of loyalty to, um, to this uh, prerequisite number, but you can drag it down really low. For example, I remember getting... Um, Gaboo's hurricane move, his special uh, intelligence type move where he spins around where he looks like a Beyblade. And I got it with like 22 intelligence or something and you're supposed to have, I think, I don't, I, I'm not going to remember the exact number, but it's something high. It's like 400 or more. Um, so you can lower it that much. Um, and so what you're going to want to do if say you want Big Banana but not Boomerang because you're an idiot, um, is you want to go to the hit tech errant tree, so the Torbal C errant tree, before this requirement is met. Uh, once this requirement is met, you're you're stuck. You gotta go for this one. Um, but before either of the requirements are met, uh, if you have high loyalty, there's a chance you'll get the move anyway. And while there's still a bigger chance of getting boomerang, um, there is a chance of getting big banana. So if there's a couple of monsters where this is really necessary. For example, uh, the Nega I was talking about has Tail Assault and uh, Drill Attack that both come from Mandy, the Power Errant Tree. And I really wanted Drill Attack and I did not want Tail Assault because in the Tail Assault slot I also had Stab, which is a really fast, really accurate move. It's great and it honestly won me the tournament, that move alone. So the last thing I wanted to do was clutter up that slot with uh, an inaccurate Power like powerhouse move when I already had one in the fourth slot that was really good already. Um, so what I had to do was I had to go to Aaron Tree before I hit either of these requirements. Um, and you'll see this requirement changes for each. Um, power techniques require power. A lot of the times um, the hit techs and sharp techs will also require, yeah, see sharp tech requires intelligence and speed. Um, but you go when you have high-ish loyalty, it's usually below 50, but still like a decent amount. Yeah, this is the game saying, fuck you cheaters. Sorta. Uh, they tried to make it so certain moves could be gotten earlier. So there's like early game moves and late game moves, and that's kind of like what they were intending. Um, but loyalty does make a difference on this. So you want to go, say you have 40-ish loyalty, before intelligence and skill is over 300. So this is actually going to be very, very hard to get. Um, it's a good thing that Ape wants Boomerang and not Big Banana, because in this example, uh, I guess I'm not, I don't have a, a base stat Ape, so I can't show you. But hitting 350 is extremely easy. That's over two stats. So say you had 250 skill and 100 intelligence, you're at the threshold already. Um, so you want to make sure that that combination, you're going to have to look up whatever the combination is. It changes for every single move. Um, but you want to make sure you're below that threshold, and then at that point, you just pray to RN Jesus, and you re-roll until you get the move that you want. What Another thing that makes Ape incredibly easy to build for, especially Power Ape, is that he's got two moves that are both heavy techs, and they're his only heavy techs. 
So you go to the Mandy Aaron tree, you get grab throw, you go to the Mandy Aaron tree again, you get roll assault. Uh, grab throw has 250 power or more to unlock, which is really easy to hit. And then roll assault has 400 or more, which is also really easy to hit. Um, when you're raising a monster for a tournament, normally you want to spend as many weeks in prime training and not going to errant trees and not doing battles as possible. So if you don't know, your monster, well, anybody who's played on even a casual level knows that as your monster gets older, uh, it hits like a prime stage. And at that point, it's an adult and it stats go up at a much higher rate. And so, yeah, what's that called is colloquially, oh my god, ugh. I'm gonna drink a water real quick. Colloquially, there we go, um, is what we refer to as prime. And so this is your monster's adulthood before they're an old fart. And this is when you wanna be doing training. Doing errand trees saps your lifespan. Uh, doing battles saps your lifespan. So those are um, suboptimal if you're trying to squeeze every stat out of a monster that you can. So normally what you try to do is you get your stats almost to max, but not quite to max or like almost to whatever you want. Say I was raising um, my speed to 760 like I did. Um, in a normal build, I would probably raise life to, I don't know, maybe 900. I would raise power to maybe 900, skill to 900, and speed to maybe 700. And then what I would do is I would go to Aaron Trees. Uh, and then at that point, doing the errand tree actually you know what i'd probably raise power to um 850 or even lower because i have to go to two different errand trees and i'm going to get to a point where i'm getting maybe 40 points from an errand tree probably less but somewhere between like 25 and 45 points depending on when i go in my lifespan so the last thing you want to do is spend all this time just grinding on the ranch and then being like okay i'm gonna go on an errand tree and then you do, and then it completely fucks up your stat cap, and you go over 950, and then you end up 962, and you gotta take 12 points out of your life, and it's a huge pain, and you feel really bad about it. Um, the other way to uh, stop this from happening is to do errand trees while you're still a baby. So that may be kind of difficult to get 400 power, unless you're only raising power from the beginning, which is totally doable. Um, and especially with Ape, with a monster like this, you're going to want to use Paradoxins, so your power is going to go up anyway. So you'll probably get into a situation where in adolescence, or maybe still in the baby stage, uh, you'll have over 400 power and you can do your errand trees. Uh, you do not want to do them during Prime if you have a high stat cap. If you're, you have low stat cap, like 3000 or lower, um, I don't think it really matters too much. This one right now has a stat cap of 3661. Um, anything lower than this, I think you have to, or sorry, anything higher than this, I think you have to be really strict with uh, when you send your monster to errantries, especially if it's a monster that has a lot of attacks that you want to get. And there's a lot of monsters that um, are not as simple as ape. Okay, so no monster is as simple as ape. Um, even intelligence ape is not as simple as power ape. Power ape is probably, arguably better. Um, but the thing about Intelligence Ape is Intelligence Ape has much more accurate attacks. Um, you get rid of Slap, which is kind of sad, and you lose Thwack, which is just a great move. But uh, you get Banana, you get Boomerang, and then your damage dealing Big Bomb has a B hit chance. So that's really strong. Um, it actually honestly isn't too much stronger than Slap is. Uh, I can't remember how much it got changed in HM, it may have been buffed even more. Um, but it has a fairly high critical rate, it has an 18% chance to crit um, on top of your fame stat. Um, so that's your main damage dealer when you're playing in um, an intelligence ape. Um, I actually forgot what I was talking about. But yeah, so uh, w with more uh, complicated monsters, um, you get into a situation where you have to, like if you're trying to play optimally, most a lot of people don't, but like I do, and Alkius does as much as he says he doesn't, and he kind of screws around, like he cares. Uh, and Downtempo is another player we have that uh, tries to min-max super hard all the time, tries to find like 
whatever the most egregious um, overpowered build for a specific tournament is. There's a couple of us that kind of know life this game. And uh, if you're trying to get specific moves, I highly, highly recommend um, sitting down and plotting it out and kind of figuring out, okay, so these have low requirements, I can get these all in the baby. These have really high requirements, maybe I can wait until after I'm done training and then go back to errantry. Um, yeah, and some people just like silly gimmicks, exactly. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, Stardust, welcome back. Uh, we were just talking about planning out um, getting text from errant trees and how it's important to try and avoid doing it during um, uh, during your prime stage. Uh, even though we're not talking about intelligence save too much right now, um, because I'm not as familiar with it, and there's a little bit more nuance to it, to the point where it's probably completely invalid as a, a legitimate build unless we're playing in hard mode. Um, tech chains are another thing you need to take into consideration. Um, in order to get Big Bomb, okay, so Big Bomb requires a bad nature. Uh, that's another thing that's really good about Ape is that um, there's no nature requirement for Roll Assault or uh, Grab Throw. So if you really wanted to uh, run a Power Ape, you could. I don't recommend it, but you could. Um, Tasty banana. Yeah, so uh, to get big bomb, you need to use bomb 50 times. So to use bomb 50 times, it means you need to enter tournaments and physically use the move 50 times or more. Um, so at that point, if you really want big bomb, and realistically you do, if you're building an intelligence ape, um, the thing you want to do is you want to uh, figure out when the best time for you to enter tournaments is. And again, that will be after Prime. That'll be once you're uh, an old man and your stats start going down and you're getting close to your maximums, like your maximum life, your maximum power, your maximum skill and speed. Um, again, important to not actually have your stats maxed out if you're going to enter tournaments because when you're done a tournament, chances are you're gonna win. Um, and if you win, your stats go up. You get a boost at the end of the tournament. And the higher rank tournament it is, the more stats you get. So at the lower ranks, it doesn't matter too much. But once you're up in S rank, which you inevitably will be, um, you have a situation where um, you're gaining plus 10 to three different stats. So you'll get into a situation where you win the tournament and uh, you get a boost to intelligence and defense, and which is a thing you don't want. And this is why playing on an emulator is kind of necessary if you're trying to raise a competitive monster. Because if you're trying to play on a console or you're trying to play on an emulator without state saves or something like that, without all the, the modern wonders we have, you get in a situation where you finish the tournament, you don't get the rolls you get want at the end, say you get a boost to intelligence and defense, and you have to reset and do a tournament all over again. And it can be really frustrating because you say you use bomb a lot for whatever reason you missed way more than normal so oh yeah that's another thing the move doesn't have to hit you just have to use it so say you ended up using bomb almost 50 times like entirely uh in one tournament and you were able to almost fully unlock big bomb in one tournament you'd be like oh that's great i want to save that progress so next time i enter a tournament i know for sure i'm gonna hit over the 50 mark and i can get my next tech um and then you finish the tournament and your intelligence goes up and you got to reset and do it all over again. Um, nobody has any qualms in the competitive scene about using save states. Um, most of us don't use them in situations where like player skill is necessary. So things like in the middle of a battle, like you don't save after you've hit a move. Um, I mean, maybe some people do, but I, th I think that's a little scummy. Um, it's, it's all a matter of preference, and the thing is that it's extremely easy to cheat in this game. Everything can be done with uh, Game Shark if you wanted. Like, I got this four-month ape with min-max stats, and and there's it's actually really hard to tell if the person cheated or not. So, I'm sure there's people who do stuff like that, but I personally don't. Like, it, the game is mechanical enough as it is for me. Like, it's I go through the motions as it is. So... Anything to like leave an actual semblance of like fun gameplay is a thing that I kind of hold on to. But after the battle's over and I'm looking at my stat rolls, 
I immediately hit F1. I hit that state, that state save, and I re-roll over and over and over again until I get stats that are ones that I'm trying to raise. So I would re-roll until I got three stats of the four that I'm raising. So life, power, skill, and speed. And then towards the end, it gets even more difficult. And this is why you don't want to go over a stat or max a stat, because if you do max a stat, um, that's more rerolls you have to do because say, I don't want intelligence. I don't want defense. And my speed is already at 760. At this point, all I can do is reroll until I get exactly life, power, and skill. And I've been in this situation and a lot of other players have been in this situation before. And it can take like 20 or 30 minutes of rerolling to get the exact three stats. It's completely RNG. So that's 20 to 30 minutes of sitting there hitting um, load state. Um, no, it didn't roll. Load state. No, it didn't roll. Load state over and over and over again. And it's really tedious. And you can imagine how many hours and days this would take if you had to do a 10 minute tournament every single time. Uh, it, it's tedious for me and it takes about three seconds each time. So that's why you really, really want to make sure you're not at max stats. Um, the reason you want some text over other text is sort of a matter of preference. There are some texts that are objectively better than others. But for example, on Ape, you want the moves you have here because you have one good move in each slot. And then you can see here in the closest slot, we got Swing Throw. Swing Throw is a massive move. It's one of the strongest moves in the game. It costs 50, but it does 61 damage. Um, just as an example, the strongest moves in the game are in the 70 range. So this is almost there. This is huge. Um, and another thing is you can see um, like C, um, C rank damage, for example, starts at 20 and it goes up to th uh, 29. Uh, B rank starts at 30 and goes up to 40. A rank starts at 40 and goes up to 50. And then S rank is everything above 50. And so this is a massive jump over 50. This is almost this is 50% more powerful than rule assault, even though it's only one letter difference. And same thing with um, Ape doesn't have a good example of this. Uh, but you can get into a situation where you have two D rank moves and one does 10 damage and one does 19 damage. And so they're both D rank moves, but one almost does double the amount of the other. So it's not so much knowing the letter damages as much as it is knowing the specific discrete amount. And again, that's a thing that it's different for every move. Oops, I accidentally moved that out. Let me uh, adjust that, bring that back down. There we go. Um, and so yeah, it's different for every move. You just kind of need to know uh, what you're dealing with. But the reason we don't get swing throw is for two very, very good reasons. On Ape, he only has one power type move with an A rank hit chance. And Slap has an eight. And so what that means is um, the move essentially has a 58% chance to hit if all things are equal. If the monsters have the same uh, guts correction, which is a thing I'll get into, and then they both have the same skill and speed, um, so both, so my accuracy equals my opponent's evasion. Um, Slap will have a 58% chance. That's his most accurate move. Um, and if you take a look at this, Swing Throw has a minus 10. So if everything is equal, um, Swing Throw has a 40% chance to hit. And it costs almost 10 times as, almost 5 times as much. 10 times. It's some really bad math. Um... Swing in, uh, sorry, slap in the base game. I'm on hard mode right now, but slap in the base game cost 13, and it was uh, lowered to be a little bit more damage efficient in HM. Um, but the, yeah, with a really, really slow gust rate like Ape, you're almost never going to have a chance to have 50. Is there a chart that shows all the moves and stats and numbers? Yes, there is. There's actually plenty. Um, I can link them uh, in the chat, or maybe somebody from the Discord can uh, link to uh, the spreadsheets. But there's plenty of different... Uh, resources for that and they're really really helpful nobody expects you to remember all these numbers um alkeus may have them memorized because he's a human robot but 
Even I don't have this stuff memorized. I don't ever raise apes. I remember Thwack having a 20, uh, like specific numbers like that, because it's uh, it's just one of the, the best basic techs in the game, and it's kind of an oddity. So there's a lot of moves that I know specific stuff about, but as far as all the moves in the game, I, I'm clueless. If you were to ask me what the withering on swing throw was, like I have no idea. Um, it's 37 apparently. Um, but yeah, so you want to have at least one move that's kind of accurate. And slap, even though it doesn't do a ton of damage, uh, 15 isn't bad. It's pretty good. It's it's actually very good for a basic tech. Um, and with a really slow gust rate, you don't want to have a move that costs 50. Because what happens is uh, you miss this move, you miss swing throw, and you instantly lose. You're probably not getting another chance to attack with an ape. Um, especially if your opponent does any type of withering. Uh, even anger and 50% boost is not going to save you. Because 50% on top of zero is still zero. And if you think of it that way, uh, a really low guts rate gets a minimal boost by, um, like, sorry, a really bad guts rate, not to be confusing, uh, it gets a, a much smaller boost from anger than a really, really good guts rate does. So something like Metalner or uh, Pixie um, with anger gets an astronomical buff from anger. Like, it becomes stupid, the amount of guts they raise. Um, uh, Ape actually has the, the second worst guts rate in the base game. Um, the only monster that's worse is Dragon. So even with Anger, Anger's not going to save you. So you miss Swing Throw, you're probably going to lose. You're probably not going to get another chance to attack. And Ape already has three other moves with Thwack, Grab, Throw, and Roll Assault that do a hefty chunk of damage. And Slap does a, a decent amount of damage for how reliable it is. So you're basically over committing to winning on one hit if you grab Swing Throw. Whereas you are mitigating a lot of the RNG that can happen in a battle by relying on the other three. By relying on Thwack, Grab Throw, and Roll Assault. Reliability and consistency is what wins events, and it's what makes a good tournament monster. And Swing Throw has none of those things. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is called Guts Correction. And offhand, I don't know the exact math on it. Um, but what it is, is basically the worse a monster's guts rate is, the higher their accuracy is. So this was a way for Tecmo to try and balance um, guts rates because they kind of realized after the first game, or even during the first game, um, that a monster that has a higher guts rate is better than a monster that has a lower guts rate. There's almost no situation where that's not the case. Um, so what Guts Correction is, I, I, I say almost no, because there's a couple of examples and we'll get into that. But um, Guts Correction basically means the worse your Guts rate is compared to your opponent, the higher your accuracy is and the lower your opponent's accuracy is. Um, and the reason that this is an inborn thing is because, like I said, um, having a higher Guts rate is better, is because when you have a higher Guts rate, it means that your resource to attack fills more quickly. And when your meter fills more quickly like that, it means that you get to attack more often. And getting to attack more often is always better than being able to attack less often. So for example, if you take a look again at Slap. Slap with the 8% hit chance. So we already spoke about that. All things being equal, um, an ape versus another ape, they both have maxed speed and skill. Slap will have a 58% chance to hit. Um, if you have to fight a Metalner or a Pixie as Ape, this number jumps drastically. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it, like going from one of the worst monsters in the game to one of the worst to best monsters in the game, as far as Guts Rate is concerned, um, makes all of Ape's moves much, much, much more accurate. And it makes all of the Pixie or Metalner's moves uh, way less accurate. Yeah, so that's that's what Guts Correction is. Um, there's also another thing that's kind of referred to as Guts Correction that uh, happens in battle. We, ne we need another term for it. We need to kind of differentiate these. But the more Guts you have in a battle, the more damage you're doing. And you've probably noticed this from casual playthroughs, where like if you attack multiple times in a row, you'll notice your damage is going down a little bit each time. Um, 
And it's basically, if you have 99 guts, you're going to do more damage than if you're at 50 guts. And in comparison to your opponent. And so not only do you do more damage, the more guts you have in comparison to your opponent, the more accurate you are in comparison to your opponent. The reason that um, Guts Rate works the way it does and Guts Correction works the way it does is that Ape is innately more accurate than Pixie because um, he's going to spend most of the game being less accurate, if you know what I mean. Like, he's not going to be at 99 Guts when Pixie is. He's always going to be at a deficit for the most part. So because of that, he's got a bump on his uh, the, his base moves, basically. It kind of balances out, like it doesn't really, but that was sort of their... Um, like that was their goal, is that the monster that um, has really good guts rate should wait to attack until it has higher guts. Um, and then at that point, it kind of has like an average accuracy. Whereas the monster that has uh, low guts is almost never going to get to 99, so it, it kind of matters less for him. Um, on the plus side, uh, if you are an ape and you're at 99 guts and you're playing against a pixie who misses like Big Bang or something, um, you basically have an instant kill in your pocket. You're going to do way more damage, you're super, um, you're super overpowered at that point. Um, all things considered, high guts rates mons still seem to fare better. Uh, on the whole, yes. Uh, most of... If a monster has a high guts rate, it's almost always better than a monster that has a low guts rate. There's a huge, huge asterisk beside this though, because while guts rate matters a lot in whether or not a monster is good, the thing that makes a monster good even more than guts rate is their techs. Is how good their techs are. Pixie has an incredible guts rate, and garbage techs. All of her attacks suck in the base game, like incredibly badly. Uh, there's very few monsters in the base game that have a worse selection of techs than Pixie. Her accurate attacks do no damage. Um, her powerful attacks aren't powerful enough to make it worth it. Flame is kind of an outlier because it does a ton of damage for how long the animation time is. Um, normally you want an animation for a move to be short because uh, while the animation is happening, your opponent is gaining guts and you're not. So you see all these like fun gimmicky um, moves like uh, Big Banana, our favorite over here, that takes forever to actually happen. And uh, while that whole wind up animation of him swinging his hand around waiting for the Big Banana to fall is happening, uh, your opponent is gaining guts and you're not. So you want to you want moves to have really short. Um, short animations and so flame has a really short animation and does a decent amount of damage it actually does a lot of dps but um, outside of flame as like a damage dealing move um, all of pixie's moves have really long animations none of them actually do a ton of damage to like compensate for it um bolt and lightning are kind of pathetic with their damage output they're super accurate but they don't do anything so who cares they don't do any withering either um kiss is kind of an oddity where it has sharpness it can critical hit but doesn't do any damage and and critical doesn't affect uh, withering as far as i know so i don't know what the deal with that is um and then all of her power attacks kind of suck like heal rate is okay i guess but slap and uh, high kick are really bad hat and kick are garbage um so that's kind of an outlier where pixie is bad. The tech selection is the most important factor on what makes a monster good and then um, within that breed the best monster is almost always the one with the highest guts rate. So like Nega is really good but Nega Pixie is the best Nega. Um, Golem is really good but Astro the the Golem um, Golem Metalner is the best Golem. Um, and so that's kind of how the tier list is made. It's, it's based on how good um, the base techs are, and then um, within those breeds, it's how good the monsters are. You get into situations where something like Golem or, geez, even Mono. Mono is a really good example, where the good monsters and the bad monsters within Monos are absolutely not in the same tier at all. Um, Monol is one of the monsters that can be cocooned, which if you don't know what it means, um, 
if you feed um, worm enough cup jellies, it turns into a cocoon, and then you can get a bee clone. But uh, under less strict requirements, you can get uh, you can get a mono slash worm, you can get a pixie slash worm. Uh, I forget what the other ones are. It doesn't matter too much. The, the one that people really use it for is uh, mono, and the reason for that is that it carries over all of the previous worm's stats, like and all of its attributes. So a really common tactic is to use a worm slash pixie red worm, which has a really high guts rate for a worm at least, and a guts rate that is impossible to hit on a mono. It's way higher than what a mono is capable of. Um, and then cocooning it into the mono slash worm, the, the Soberos, and then at this point you have a mono that wasn't intended to be as strong as it is. It's far stronger than every other mono that is capable that you're capable of making, and uh, it's tiers and tiers higher than every other mono. Um, there's very few examples of this. Uh, mono's really the main one, but this is where guts rate makes the difference. It's the same monster, and all other things considered, um, the one with the higher guts rate is the one that's better. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, really quick summary. Oops, <laughs> there's a summary of how to do drills. That's not what I want. Um, for stat caps, level is the thing that matters. You see life, power, and skill are all at level 20. That's considered max. Uh, and then, so 950 or 999 doesn't matter. It's all the same. Uh, when you're on a stat cap, you want to make sure that... Uh, you've saved as many points as possible here and there to dump into life or another stat. Um, so for speed, you use max skinniness if you're doing a speed build. Uh, if you were doing a defensive build, you use max plumpness. So you can actually hit an effective 950 speed with only 760. 760 is the number to, uh, to remember. That's the number to remember, 760. So because of that, you have 190 points that you can dump into something else. This one's just an example. Um, intelligence does not matter if you do not have any intelligence attacks. Uh, even though it does help with defense from uh, your opponent's intelligence attacks, it does so little for you that you're almost always better off just ignoring it. Um, and then how, how do moves transform in Cocoon? I'm not sure... Yeah, it's its own spreadsheet. It's awkward. I, I, I'm not going to be able to explain this in uh, this video. Maybe a later one. Um, and then... What else? Okay, so there's... That's how you raise for a stat cap tournament. Um, you want to raise in order, specifically if you're trying to do a fast power build. Uh, if you want to lower both intelligence and defense to one, so you have as many leftover points as possible to throw into life. Um, you want to use swim. You want to use swim uh, to lower your intelligence as far as it can go. And then once intelligence is at one, you want to use paradoxins to lower your defense all the way to one. Um, and then that's, that's really the only thing you need to worry about as far as that goes. Um, battle specials you get before uh, you raise your monster really easy thing to do is just mix something with a mochi to get grit and for most intents and purposes that's good enough you really only want anger or power and grit grit is the important one um i think fury ease and hurry are all really really good uh situationally but they're not important uh they're not as important as grit grit's definitely more more important than that um the way you get text is really important. You need to make sure that you've um, figured out if you need to priority skip, as we mentioned. If uh, you want to do a cephalic carnage, big banana, instead of uh, the smart boy boomerang. Uh, make sure that you're not over the, the threshold for the lower one. Make sure you're underneath that, and then just reset until you hate the game. Um, why you would want some techs over others is because of consistency. You want slap over swing throw because you want to be able to hit your opponent and you don't want to instantly lose. Um, and 
the last thing is making sure that um, your loyalty is 100 because loyalty obviously stops foolery. It doesn't stop at 100%. Even loyalty at 100% will not stop every single foolery. Um, it, just, it makes it very, very unlikely, but you can get unlucky. Um, and fame, every point in fame adds 0.1% to your critical hit rate. So some moves innately have no critical hit chance. Um, apes, not like that. Um, sharpness is critical hit rate in case you don't know. But uh, Slap has... Actually, neither of them do in the base game. They've been buffed for HM, I didn't know that. Um, but then Grab Throw has a little bit of critical hit chance or sharpness, and Roll Assault has a little bit of critical hit chance or sharpness. But uh, Fame, at 100 Fame, you get an additional 10% just base across all your attacks. So attacks that have really high critical hit rate are base, are bumped by 10. Moves that had none now have a 10% chance to crit. So that's why fame is important. Always, always, always have fame at 100. There's no reason not to. 